you know, there are a lot of different videos out there that go over what are the most important like settings for, you know, 3D printing and stuff. And these are all fine and great. But an issue you might have is that they are mostly geared towards, you know, figurines and miniatures, mostly for show. Now, I don't know, maybe you might be like me. I usually like to make sure, you know, my anime statue is very, very durable and can handle, I guess, a couple of a uh, couple of hits. Because a lot of the things I print usually do go boom at some point. So I'm going to go over the settings I usually use to make sure I have a strong, durable uh, figurine on this nice 3D Benchy. So... Like I said, this is going to be kind of, this will be more of like a guide, actually. Yeah, treat this as a guide. Don't copy everything I do because my printer is not stock and it might definitely, it probably shouldn't work for you. Actually, you know what? I have an idea. Um, how about you guys also to leave in the comments below what settings you guys use, you know, see how it compares to mine, maybe help out other people. But let's carry on. So let's just start from a basic uh, dynamic quality. That's usually the one I go to. And let, let's look at the first thing to really change here. Oh yeah, for what I usually do is, uh, this is line width, so also known as, I think, extrusion width. I usually change this to 0.6. It makes sure that your walls are thicker, and it also can help decrease your time, or print time, and also I think it increases your print strength. That one, I need to remember, I'm trying to remember exactly how it works, but... If you don't print with this, it's not the end of the world. It's not like your printer's gonna explode or your print's gonna explode in your hands. Okay, the other thing that we can look at that would probably help you fix or fix anything if you can't get this to work for you because 0.6 might be much. Um, we can also mess around with wall thickness. So what I like to do is make sure I at least have four walls. Um, this depends from print to print. You know, usually I would recommend going with whatever your uh, guide tells you to do you know sometimes it might say you need this many walls or you want it to be at least like this if they don't this is kind of just what i do if it works i'll do or i'll be sure to use it if it doesn't work then i'll just reprint it with something different but four walls is usually good i think walls are some of the most important things you want to at least have for a nice durable print though it's not going to be too big of a deal because you're we're going to get to the infill density pretty soon and that should at least you know compensate for i guess very low or thin wall counts. Um, let me see about anything else here. Not really. Uh, I, d I don't like ironing. I think it makes my print worse and usually causes weirder like artifacts on the top of mine. Some people like it. I just don't. Okay. Yeah. Infill density. Now, I don't keep it... At, I don't set it to 100. Because if you set it to 100, this is what it will look like. So it's set to lines. I'm going to change it to something else. It's, you'll see, it's going to still be lines. Let's change it to cubic, 100%. Let's just wait for this thing to slice. Okay. Yeah. So let's zoom in on it. Yeah. Notice how, I guess, yeah, it's basically all lines. So what I'll do is I usually either go between um, gy er, gyroid, at 99%. You also get a decrease in print speed or print time depending on what infill. This one usually takes a little bit longer, but this is kind of my go-to of oh, my printer my prints keep cracking or something or it's not going something's going weird. I usually go with gyroid. It is one of the more, I guess, structurally sound infills you can go with, but this is what it looks like and the other one I do, and this is another fun one is I was saying something about walls. I like to use concentric because um, concentric is basically all walls. So it doesn't matter if you only had like two or three out there. Now everything's a wall. And also, this is usually the fastest or infill pattern to print. So you're going to probably want to make sure your cooling is good enough for you to be able to do this. Mine are, I upgraded my printer fans, I think, to 420 ones. Yeah, those ones are pretty nice. They do a very good job. But yeah, you don't need, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't recommend it unless you're an idiot like me and you break your fan shroud. Um, so because I have my print or my extrusion width set to 0 0.6, we're going to want to increase that print temperature to, to at least, I want to say like five to like seven degrees Celsius higher than what's normally recommended or what you normally print in. 
Um, I think my PLA Plus is usually, or I think it's upper bound is 230. I print usually at like 225-ish. So now that I'm using an extrusion width of 0.6, I'm going to bump that up to three or 235, which definitely do not do this if this is, you know, you're doing a normal 0.4. This is going to cause a lot of weird things. But if you're going to be increasing that extrusion width, you're going to want to increase your temperature because now you'll be able to hopefully push enough filament out or else if you don't change it, you might get some weird, I guess, like layer skips and stuff because you might not be able to extrude it. Okay, another thing is you can either keep the build plate at 60. I sometimes set it to 45, so I don't have to have, I guess, elephant footing. I usually will put a glue stick anyways, though, if it's going to be a print that goes over, I would say, like a day. Because believe it or not, even PLA can warp. But if you put glue on it, chances are it won't warp. And 45 is good. I think 60 degrees Celsius is also a PLA plus is a glass transition temperature. So that also explains why I kind of get, you get elephant footing every now and then. Um, print speed. So yeah, I have a geared or a dual geared extruder. So I'll go to 60 normally and I'll change that wall speed to at least 40, sometimes 45. I'll go 40. And yeah. Oh, this is another one. I like to set my initial speed to 10, just because the slower your initial speed is, you'll get a better first layer. And if you're having a lot of issues where your print keeps like falling off the print bed, try slowing down that initial layer. I think there are other things too, where you can even increase the temperature even more for that one first layer. And that can also help too, but usually just increasing or decreasing the initial layer speed works pretty well for me. Um, acceleration jerk, don't bother with that. Um, retraction. Yeah, so I have an all metal hot end. I think the limits for that one is I think three millimeters of retraction distance. So I usually set mine to 4.5. That is bad. That's not supposed to happen. Usually for PLA, it should clog and you know usually jam. I don't have that issue. And if I don't print it at 4.5, I have absolutely unusable stringing. So this works for me. I wouldn't copy this, but always, of course, check how things work for you. You can print retraction tests. It's a very good way to help. Um, usually, I think retraction speed's good as is. You want to keep it to 4.25 combing mode. This one, I don't think any, or I usually set it on to within the infill, but within the infill and not the skin is basically the same, but different somehow. What it should do is I think it optimizes uh, the printer heads movement to a way that you won't need to do retractions so it's pretty good to use but those the differences between those two I have no idea but I usually set it in within the infill um other things z-hop I usually don't use it for at least you know the very durable uh, 3d benches I often print yeah, enable car part cooling I would usually turn this off if you if you're not going to be doing what I'm doing the, the 0.6 at very fast speeds you're going to need cooling but if you're going to be going with the normal like typical normal ender 3 speeds you might want to lower this down to I guess like 30ish because the more you cool the weaker your parts are but also the more you cool the faster you can also print things so it's a bit of a it's a bit of a yin and a yang, you know, you know, you don't, you can't go too much in certain things. You're going to need to play around with stuff. But if you, usually the less cooling you have, the better or stronger your print should be. So, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really recommend this except, you know, for me, I'm a bit lazy and, you know, when I want to just get something quickly, I will set this to a hundred percent and print very fast. So eh, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, that's another good thing. Um, yeah, generate support. I usually go with uh, tree supports, usually, and I go to touching build plate. It's more, it usually gives cleaner supports, and, you know, it will be, I think it's usually better. Sometimes it gives you um, less, um, less material, or yeah, it uses less material than normal supports. Sometimes it actually uses more, but... It depends on what you're printing, really. If it takes way too much time and it doesn't really give you much of a benefit, I would just say stick with normal ones, but I, I usually prefer using the tree prints. Um, support density, I usually set this to 0.5, or I set this to 5%. It's pretty low, I know, but um, even yeah, for normal supports, I think it's usually 20. I, I hate it. If it's a, those are a pain to take off, so I usually set it to something lower. 5 works for me. It might not work for you, though. 
And yeah, build plate or adhesion. I brim is usually the safest bet, but if it's a small, if it's going to be a short print that you know won't really or isn't too big of like you, you don't think it's going to be warping much if like if it's constantly or has a very large surface area touching the build plate, you might be able you can probably get away with a skirt. If you use a glue stick, probably should be fine. But if you're constantly having warping or you know issues, I would probably stay with brim. Rafts are annoying, so I won't even bother. Um, yeah, printer sequence, this is, this is useless. Um, pretty much all of these are done. Um, oh yeah, another fun thing is, I think, uh, C-seam. So let me just search up seam. I will do to um, sharpest corner and smart hiding. It makes things look nice. And then I guess another f good thing we should look at maybe before we actually print this thing out um let's go let me show you another fun thing you can try if you want your print to be a little bit more durable you can go to a, print it at a 45 degree um i guess um print angle let's see what this looks like you should get nice layer lines within the x and the y directions which will result in stronger print wait a second okay uh this is okay i recognize this problem very well all right, you guys actually might get a very useful tip. Okay, um, see this? See these little um, weird um, artifacts here? Kind of how these lines look much closer together, but there's this like really weird, awkward, uh, large gap. So this actually prints has a single um, a single layer. This whole whole I guess I don't even know how much that would be. That'd be like maybe four millimeter. I don't know. This is going to cause you problems. It will, nothing you can do about it will fix it. It's just going to mean you have a bad print. Your print will be bad. It will, it might look like under extrusion, or you just might not have a layer there, or it might just be like a weird layer floating in nothing. I was printing an RP9 upper, I mean, Benchy, and it was constantly giving me these weird, like, gaps and I thought it was something wrong with my printer. I kept troubleshooting everything and then I finally looked at the preview again and I realized, hey, there's this weird gap. Sometimes it shows it, but other times it doesn't. Um if you look at it sometimes it will just like be a single layer. But I guess concentric really isn't the best one to show this because it kind of already always does look like that. But this right there is not normal. And I actually do have a fix for this. <laughs> I I don't understand how it works, but let me show you. Okay, so notice how we have all the stuff already set up. Now, let's actually, we are going to change only one thing. One thing only. We're going to switch to standard quality. And I don't want to change that stuff, so let's do keep changes. Okay, so all the changes should be kept pretty much. 99 concentric, all this other stuff. Okay, great. The only thing that should be different is our initial layer height. So it's now going to be 0.2. Get ready for this. Done. It, it's fixed. The, those little artifacts, they're gone. They're, they're gone now. And want to see something even weirder? 0.16. No problems again. No, no problems at all. It's really only with the di or the dynamic problem or or um, yeah, dynamic profile. I don't know why this happens in Cura. I don't understand it. But if you're getting really, really weird looking prints, not even not even for um functional and very durable necessary uh, parts like uh, this 3D Benchy would be, you might have it might be a weird or default setting. I have yet to figure out what that setting is. But for some reason, if you just use the standard quality settings and treat it exactly like dynamic, it will fix the weird slicer problems you might have. So let me go change this back to normal one. I don't want to print it in this weird angle. And let me go save this thing real quick. And I will show you guys or what the result is right after I finish printing this. So let me go do that. Okay, and um, this is how you make a Glock.